What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in Black Ops Cold War's multiplayer, and in today's episode, we're going to be moving on to the KSP-45. Now, starting it off as always, let's have a look at our damage profile, and this is the highest damage SMG in the game. It deals 50 damage up close, then 38 at mid-range, and 35 at longer ranges. What this means is in core game modes, it's going to be a 3, 4, or 5 shot kill, depending on the range, and in hardcore, it will always be a 1 shot kill, unless you're shooting through something, or unless the enemy has armor. As for headshots, we get a standard headshot multiplier at 1.4, and what this means is up close, it's still going to be a 3 shot kill, so headshots don't do anything for you up close. At mid range, if you hit every bullet to the head, you can get a 1 burst kill, or a 3 shot kill which isn't super practical, and then finally at the longer ranges, just one headshot mixed in with body shots will reduce the number of shots to kill, and therefore headshots are effective at longer ranges. As for our rate of fire, keeping in mind this is a 3 round burst SMG, the rate of fire within the burst is 722 rounds per minute, and then we have a very short burst delay at just 88 milliseconds. It's a very forgiving gun considering the fact that it is a burst weapon. Now, as for our time to kill, up close if we manage to get that one burst kill, our time to kill potential is 166 milliseconds, which is practically untouchable by any other gun in the game. This gun kills literally twice as fast as almost every one of the assault rifles in the game. It's insane how fast the time to kill potential is, if you can kill in just one burst. Now beyond getting a one burst kill, our time to kill potential isn't amazing by any means, but it's also not too bad, it's still relatively competitive. But moving on to our bullet velocity, this is very very slow, at just 200 meters per second. It's one of the slowest bullet velocities in the entire game, and therefore it is quite difficult to stay on target for longer range engagements. And speaking of ranges, as you can see here, our one burst kill potential, or three shot kill potential, is about 15 meters, which is not too bad. You can definitely navigate most maps in such a way that you keep yourself within that 15 meters, and that should really be your goal with this gun. But beyond that, our four shot kill range will extend out to 25 meters. And as for hardcore modes, like I said earlier, this will always be a one shot kill in hardcore. Moving on to hipfire, we do have a standard hipfire spread for SMGs, but I did want to mention that the way this burst gun works, it just tends to work really well with hipfire in my experience when you are in those really close range situations, and therefore I do encourage you guys to hipfire with this gun when you're right up close and personal. As for our idle sway, you can see here there is a little bit of movement while aiming down sight, but really not that bad, especially for an SMG. This is fairly low in the idle sway department. And then let's get into recoil. The recoil on the KSP is quite interesting. It doesn't really tend to kick too far from the point of aim. However, there is a lot of randomness within a small area. So you'll get a lot of horizontal recoil, you get a little bit of vertical recoil, and sometimes it'll even kick downward from your point of aim. So it's definitely not the most precise weapon out there for the really long range encounters, but if you are playing to the strength of this gun and keeping yourself within that three shot kill potential, then recoil should generally not be a problem for you. But moving on to our handling, we've got a pretty standard aim down sight time at 275 milliseconds. Then our actual in-game experience sprint out time is also pretty standard for an SMG at 250 milliseconds. Now getting into our reload time, our base reload time is 1.57 seconds, which is definitely on the faster side for SMGs. But if you guys wanted to change up your magazine attachment, here are the reload add times for all of the different magazine attachments you have to choose from. And then finally for base stats, we have our movement speed, which is exactly the same as all of the other SMGs. So now let's have a look at the strengths and weaknesses, and we'll start it off with the strengths. The first big strength here is obviously its time to kill potential. Like I said, this is practically untouchable. There's almost nothing that will kill as fast as a KSP. And on top of this, for a burst gun, it's got a very forgiving burst delay. If you don't get that one burst kill, it's usually not the end of the world, and you'll often have time to get that second burst out there, or even third burst in many situations. Additionally, like I said, even though the hipfire spread is the same as most of the other SMGs, there's just something about the way this gun works with its burst that makes it feel really good at hip firing. As for the weaknesses though, we have an extremely slow bullet velocity, so definitely something to be aware of. And also, if you are trying to stretch the ranges out and challenge somebody at longer ranges, the bursts themselves aren't super accurate in those situations. Like I said, accurate enough if you're playing to the strengths of the gun, but if you're trying to stretch it, it's just not accurate enough, I find. But finally, before we get into our recommended class setups, let's get into the unique barrel attachment, which is the Task Force Barrel, and with this one, it does boost our damage profile to a 53, 40, 37, which doesn't change the number of shots to kill to the body at all. It's still going to be 3, 4, or 5 shot kill, 
And then also when we have a look at headshots, it doesn't change the number of shots it takes to kill with that either. So realistically, this task force barrel is only really good for the range boost as well as your bullet velocity boost. I should also mention that it noticeably increases our recoil, and while it might not look too bad, when you think about the fact that you're trying to get that one burst kill, generally I'll be avoiding this barrel. I can see an argument for using it, but I find that increase to your recoil kind of makes it pointless to increase the range because then you're just going to reduce the odds of hitting that one burst kill. So that finally wraps it up for the stats of this gun. Now let's get into some great attachment combinations and example class setups. And the first one I've got for you guys, this is my go-to with the KSP. I've got the regular sound suppressor on here. I've got the 10 and a half inch reinforced heavy barrel, which increases our damage range as well as our bullet velocity. Then after that, we do have a five milliwatt laser because like I said, this gun is just really good at hip firing and this just makes it even better. Next, we've got the Field Agent foregrip, which really helps with our recoil, both vertical and horizontal. As you can see here, we've actually got a very accurate burst now, and this means we're going to be hitting those one burst kills far more consistently while using this attachment. And finally, this just leaves us with the Speed Tape, which gives us a slight boost to our aim down sight time. And the reason I chose this over some of the other ones that increase our aim down sight time even more is I didn't want to also sacrifice sprint out time. So this one gave us a nice balance between our sprint out time and our aim down sight time. And taking this one into an example class setup here, we've got a 1911 as our secondary, just because I like mixing it up, using a bit of variety, and the 1911's a great pistol. We've got the Stimshot, Semtex, as well as a Trophy System. Then for our perks, we're using Perk Greed, I've got Flak Jacket and Tack Mask, Assassin and Scavenger, and then finally Ninja and Ghost. As for the second class setup, with this one we're going to be using the Gunfighter wildcard, so we've got eight attachments on here. And with this we have the Microflex LED Optic, the Muzzle Brake, I don't want to use a suppressor on this because I'm actually trying to increase the ranges a little bit on it to make it a bit more viable at mid-range, and this also helps a little bit with our vertical recoil control. Then we've got the same barrel as last time, the Reinforced Heavy Barrel, the 5 milliwatt Laser, that Field Agent Foregrip once again, which when you combine that with the Muzzle Brake, we can have a look at the recoil pattern here, and you can see it's even more accurate than the previous setup that we had, and that's great, especially combined with the range value I'll share with you guys in a second here. But let's finish off the other attachments, we got the Vandal Speed Loader, so we can reload almost instantly, the Airborne Elastic Wrap, so we have a super snappy aim down sight time, and we don't have to deal with that visual flinch. And then finally, the no stock attachment to help bring our sprint out time back into balance. Now with this, as you can see, our three shot kill potential is now almost 18 meters, which is a really good three shot kill potential for this gun. And therefore with this setup, I kind of treat it like a mini M16 or a mini AUG. I really feel like one burst kills with this are quite easy to get if you play to the strengths of it. And it's just a fun setup to use. Now, taking a look at the rest of the class setup here, we've got dual magnums as our secondary. Once again, we got the stim shot and the Semtex, and this time we've got the field mic. And then for our perks, we've got flat jacket, scavenger, as well as ninja. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for today's gun guide on the KSP 45. As for my personal thoughts on this gun, I think it's pretty underrated. I don't see too many people using it. It's got a ton of killing potential, and I don't think many people realize just how amazing this gun can be if you treat it right. You do have to have some good attachments on it, and you do really have to keep yourself up close and personal. But if you do those things and you have decent aim, you're going to be practically untouchable. Of course, that is just my opinion. I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think of the KSP-45 in Black Ops Cold War's multiplayer? If you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, I will leave a link to the playlist in the description down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.